Hello and welcome back. In section 4.1, uh, we get to play with the first derivatives and graphs. So remember that f prime of x describes the slope. specifically the rate of change. Of whatever function f is. Well, if we have f prime of x greater than zero, think what this means. This means positive. This tells us that f is increasing whenever f prime of x is less than zero, in other words, negative. The graph of f is decreasing. So we'll consider just a quick example of uh, parabola. f of x is x minus 4 quantity squared plus 3. As far as making that easier to differentiate, we'll look at a uh, simplified version of that x squared minus 8x plus 16 plus 3, or simply f of x is x squared minus 8x plus 19. So f prime of x would be 2x from the first term and the minus 8. See if you can answer this question. Pause it if you need to. Where is the tangent line going to be horizontal? Welcome back. If the tangent line is horizontal, that means our slope is 0. So 0 is worth 2x minus 8. So 8 is 2x. So x is 4. So the tangent line is horizontal when x is 4. So that sort of cuts our number line into sort of two pieces, things that are to the left of 4, things that are to the right of 4. Now what we can do is just kind of use a guinea pig on either side, figure out uh, what we call a test point. So I'll try out x equals 0 and x equals, I don't know, 10. And I'm looking for what the slope is at that point. So f prime of 0 would be a negative 8. That is negative, so the function is decreasing on that interval. f prime of 10, 20 minus 8 is 12. That is positive, so f is increasing on 4 to infinity. Now notice this does fit with what we know about parabolas. I intentionally picked one that you could glance at this and in your mind's eye already sort of picture what the graph looks like. Uh, it's a parabola since we're looking at an x squared graph. Leading coefficient is positive, so we know it opens up, and the vertex is at 4, 3. So x equals 4, we go from a decreasing function to an increasing function. It bottoms out at the vertex. So again, not a surprise, but this is sort of the calculus, and it's something that we'll use 
on other functions that aren't quite as easy to picture. So that four was an example of what we refer to as critical numbers. Critical numbers set of all x such that either f prime of x is equal to zero or f prime of x does not exist. So either one of those could be a change in behavior in the graph. So for example, we'll look at f of x is x cubed minus four, f prime of x, hopefully you see that that would be a three x squared. So since f prime is a polynomial, it would exist everywhere, so we don't have to worry about this second condition, we just figure out where it's worth zero. And that's at zero. So then I'll just make a quick sketch of my number line and pick out my two test points, one on either side. So f prime of negative one is positive three. It's positive, this is increasing uh, negative infinity to zero. f prime of positive one is also positive three. So we are also increasing and zero to infinity. So basically what happened here, and I'll put a union in between, uh, the graph temporarily leveled out. And hopefully you sort of recall that that's what the cube functions look like. So our tangent lines are positive, 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 becoming less positive, but still positive. And they finally bottom out at zero, but then turn right back around then are positive again. So on this one, I wouldn't say that it's increasing on negative infinity to infinity because we do have that one spot where uh, the tangent line uh, has a slope of zero and that would be uh, not increasing, of course, then. All right, so next up, we'll, uh, we'll throw a g of x into it. Uh, we'll do negative 2 by x plus 3 quantity to the 1 third power. So we'll look at first finding critical values. So g prime of x, negative 2 thirds, x plus 3 quantity to the one third minus three thirds is negative two thirds times the derivative of x plus three, which is one. So g prime of x is negative two over three times the cube root of x plus three quantity squared. Okay, so this cannot equal zero, so we don't have any horizontal tangent lines. But as you can see, if I pick out a negative three for my input, I get zero squared, which is zero, cubed or zero is zero, three times zero is zero, zero in the denominator. Uh, so g prime does not exist at x equals negative three. So that's where We'll draw our line in the sand, so to speak. So we'll pick just something to the left of it, maybe negative four, and to the right of it, I don't know, zero. And then we'll see where this graph is increasing, decreasing. So g prime of negative four. So we have negative two upstairs. Negative four plus three is negative one. Negative one squared is one. Cube root of one is one. One by three is three. So this is a negative, so we are decreasing, at least on negative infinity to negative three. Testing out the zero, g prime of zero. We have a negative two over three times 
0 plus 3 is 3, 3 squared is 9, cube root of 9 is just a uh, cube root of 9. There's no simplifying to be done there. Negative or positive is still a negative, so we're also decreasing negative 3 to infinity. But this time, instead of a horizontal tangent line, this one actually had a vertical tangent line. So this one, we can sandwich those together and say this is decreasing negative infinity to infinity. these and then we'll get to our uh, first derivative test. Look at f of x is reciprocal of the sum of x and 5. So if I want to differentiate that it would be easier to work with in exponent form. Notice I have not taken the derivative yet so this is not f prime. I've just manipulated algebraically what that looks like. Now I'm ready to take the derivative. So negative 1, keep the base, subtract 1 from the exponent, multiply by the derivative of the argument. So this is negative 1 over x plus 5 quantity squared. So this one, uh, like before, we have uh, no horizontal tangent line. See if you can convince yourself why that is. If you get stuck on that, uh, pop back into the class and ask me about that. But we do have a critical number. Negative 5 would make us divide by 0, so x equals negative 5 is our critical number. And then we just pick test point on either side. So f prime of negative 10. Uh, we'll go with this version of it. So negative 1 over negative 10 plus 5 is negative 5. Negative 5 quantity squared, though, is 25. So this is a negative, so we're decreasing here. f prime of 0 negative 1 over 25 again. It's a negative, so we're decreasing over here as well. This one, though, for sure, I can't say decreasing on negative infinity to infinity. If you take a look at the original function, this one is undefined in the original function as well at negative 5, not just its derivative. The original is also undefined. Yeah, at the point x equals negative 5. So this one, we would definitely do the union thing when describing the behavior of this function. So this is decreasing on negative infinity up to but not including negative 5. And we'll union that up with negative 5 up to infinity. So you're going to find some critical numbers and intervals where the function is either increasing or decreasing. And we'll use one of your authors. 
So f of x, 5, what is an ugly 5? Five nonetheless. Five natural log of x minus x. So go ahead and pause it. See if you can find those critical numbers. Welcome back. So if this had started as natural log of x to the fifth minus x, I would take one step and get it to the spot where the author was kind enough to start us. So we can jump right into finding the derivative. So that's five times one over x or simply five over x. Derivative of x is 1. So we have sort of two places we're interested in. 1, x equals 0, but that's really outside of our domain. Uh, the other, we set the derivative to 0. So we'll multiply both sides through by x. Parentheses are needed there since this is two terms. Zero times anything is zero, so zero is five minus x, so x is five. So we have something happening at zero, something happening at five. Now, to the left of zero, that would be negative territory, natural log of a negative number does not exist. We're not interested in that part at all. Nothing's happening there. The function is not defined in that interval. So really, we just need to test two intervals then. So we'll test maybe x equals, uh, well, let's do 1 and 6. So f prime of 1, so 5 over 1 minus 1, so that's a positive 4. So we are increasing on that interval. f prime of 6, 5 over 6 minus 1 is the same as 6 over 6, so that is a negative. Happens to be 1, 6 but the key part is it's negative. So we are decreasing there. And we're running out of real estate here. We'll, we'll fix, we'll fit it here. So we are increasing on zero, five, and we are decreasing on five to infinity. So the next topic we get into is the first derivative test, which is basically just a continuation of what we've just been working on. So basically the idea of the first derivative test find all c such that f prime of c is either equal to zero or f prime of c is undefined. Does not exist. x equals c may be a local extrema, also called relative extrema. We're not guaranteed, we're just saying it may be. And basically what we look at is if we are Looking at, I'll just draw an arbitrary one here is C. We use test point A and test point B. If we find out that it's increasing at A and decreasing at B, then we have as long as F of C exists, then 
then C, F of C is a local max. You can create for yourself another version looking at here's A and B again, only if we're decreasing and then switch around to increasing, this would then be a local min. Minima for singular, minimum or plural. But remember, we do have uh, some graphs that we, we saw a couple before where either uh, the graph just sort of levels out temporarily and drops back down. In that case, that would not be an extrema. We could flip that over the other way. Uh, also, we did see some places with a vertical tangent line where we're increasing on both sides of it or decreasing on both sides of it. Let's see into that notebook. Okay, I'm spare right here. All right. All right, so let's take a look at an example. So f of x, we'll go with 2x cubed plus 6x squared minus 90x plus 1. f prime of x, go ahead and pause it and differentiate that. We'll welcome back. So 6x squared plus 12x minus 90. Okay, so this is defined everywhere since it's a polynomial, so we don't have to worry about f prime not existing. So all we're worried about is where it's worth zero. And a little hint here, you can pull a common factor of six from these guys. Uh, so that would be x squared plus a 2x minus, let me go in once, and 30, we go to 5, 15. So x plus 5 by x minus 3. So x is negative 5, or x is positive 3. So those are the critical numbers. So I'm going to draw my quick sketch here. Negative 5 is to the left of 3 on the number line. So now I just need one guinea pig per section, so in this case, three of them. Uh, negative 6, 0, and... I don't know, four. You could have picked negative 10, zero, and 10. We'll get the same answer still. Uh, it'll just look different in between when we plug it in. Uh, for simplicity's sake, uh, as far as uh, figuring out if we're increasing or decreasing, I'm going to use the factor version of f prime when I test these out. So f prime of negative six, we have six, times negative one, times negative nine. That is a positive. So I like to just kind of draw a quick little positive slope line or curve in that section. So it's not really representing exactly what it's doing in a 2D plane. It's just reminding me, okay, moving left to right, this graph is going up. Function values are getting bigger. Uh, F prime of zero, we have a positive six by a positive five by a negative three. That is a negative. So I know we are decreasing on that interval. So we have a local max at negative five. And finally, we finish it out with f of 4. So positive 6 by positive 9 by positive 1. That is positive. So we're back to increasing. So then to find out what ordered pairs we have for local extrema, we go back into the original. So f of... 
our critical number negative 5. Uh, that one turns out to be 351. So that is a local max. And f of our other critical number, 3, f of 3, was negative 161. And that is a local min. All right, so that should give you enough to try this out. Let's see, so in, uh, we're in 4.1, uh, I would recommend, let's see, 9 to 26 all, and 27 to 55 on the odds. And if you'd like, I can also find equivalents. Uh, rough equivalents in the uh, electronic homework as well. So if you have any questions, please get in touch. Otherwise, I will see you next time. Stay safe out there.